Okay, let's welcome out this time Gary Dewey. Good morning, Gary. How are you doing? Good morning, Vernon. How are you? Now, but and this is not your first time. Uh, this is my second time. Ah, you see, you are no so take over my show, you know. <laughs> Old pro. Uh, yeah. Oh yes, and we now ha also have Terry Day. Yes, sir. And I know definitely this is not your first time. No, it's not. I've been here a couple of times. Been it's here quite a few. Good to have you. So we have both Gary and Terry. Yes, sir. I love that. <laughs> Gary and Terry. Yep. Dynamic duo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me just uh, remind my listeners of the numbers to call. Uh, we'll be taking your calls after uh, 11.15. These are the landline numbers to call. 630-9371. 630-9372. And uh, 630-9374. Our cell number is 618-8255. Ladies and gentlemen, I guess you're quite busy. Um, we had a very special person here. And I didn't get to see that special person at all. Oh, no. <laughs> they call him what? Potos? Po yeah, Pot Potos. Potos. Yeah. You, how you pronounce it? Potos? P Potos. Potos. Oh, you say Potos. Right? Potos. We say Potos. Potos. <laughs> and you know why? Because we have a thing of saying Potos is our Putus. Put What's that? What's Putus? <laughs> you never heard that. No. A Putus is a special person. Oh. Like my goodness. Oh, I'm a Putus that you love that person. So, oh. Jamaicans, we are very creative. You know, so we say, no, yeah. the Potus is our Putus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, That's I, cute. I like that. It's very clear that Jamaicans really love uh, the president. Was it Clinton was another one they love to you. I don't know why, you know. Yeah. But how was it? It was it was great. Yes. It was wonderful. We, uh, as embassy employees, we had an opportunity to um, to attend a meet and greet with the president. And so, for most of us, I'm sure that was the first. But I time. thought I was a staff member. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand you. <laughs> Your invitation you know, must have got lost in the mail, very. <laughs> <laughs> I think so too. Yeah. You know what? You know what Jamaicans really found interesting was well, it's visit to. Um, to the Bob Marley Museum, but yeah. also um, is when he went out there and he said, um, "What? Wagwan, Jamaica?" Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of our local staff uh, members uh, wrote wrote his little patois introduction for him in the in our office. And it was I was wondering if Mister Shimel had anything to do with it. Oh, you, you know. know? Oh, I'm sure <laughs> he he has he has a whole, his whole you know thing down now, so he can. He's a practically an expert at it. Uh, you know, no, he knows the part. You know. Oh yeah. The moment he did that, mm -hmm. what he did was he connected right. with his Jamaican audience. Yep. And you know, I, I've, be, I've become so fascinated that I'm also trying to even impersonate him. No, no, not to be careful of you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to talk like the president. Yeah. Well, look forward to having him again. Let me tell you something. The next time he comes, boy, we have to have a big thing, you know, motorcade oh, yeah. and everything. Because mm -hmm. the people <laughs> of this country certainly love him. Well, uh, Gary and uh, Terry, we have a caller. Let's go to this caller. Good morning. How are you? Hello, good morning. I'm okay. Hey, good to have you. Okay, I want to talk to the counselor. Yes, yeah, we're here, right really. Yes, we're here. Go good morning. Hi, good morning. How are you? Good, thanks. Okay, I made an application um, last year, but I did not get through. But one of the things that was on the application, which I put was, um, I've been filed for, but afterwards I find out that when my daughter went to put it in, um, it did not accept it because her passport needed to be renewed, but I had not known about that before I, I write up the application. How would that affect me my next time trying? Good morning. So um, if I understand your que uh, question correctly, as you were applying for a non-immigrant visa, which you didn't get, but your daughter had filed a an immigrant visa petition for you to immigrate to the U.S.? Is that correct? She was, she was going to put in a uh, um, filing for me to file for me to come there. Okay. But when she went to the place, her passport wanted to be renewed, so they did not take the documents from sure. her. But I did not know that when I write my application for the embassy because sure. um, I did not ask her if it had gone through because I think it would have gone through, but I did not know there was a error with her passport. Her passport needed to be renewed. So when I filled out my application for the embassy, I put uh, that I'm on filing. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it, it really shouldn't impact your non-immigrant visa one way or the other. It is possible uh, for a person to have a non-immigrant visa while they're waiting for the immigrant visa process to um, uh, to come to a conclusion. Uh, because as you know, depending on the relationship and so forth, it can take uh, quite a period of time for your immigrant visa uh, to process. So um, it sh shouldn't have had an impact because you can, in fact, uh, continue to visit the United States as a non-immigrant uh, while you wait for that immigrant visa to, to be approved. So. I'm not sure you understand me clearly because I'm saying that um, th there was an error made and I did not get through and I, if I want to try again, will that error affect me because I put that I was on filing not knowing the filing had not gone through yet. No, no, that should not impact Don't you. Won't affect me? No, you can go ahead and reapply and, and it should not be a problem for you. Should not be a problem. Yes, okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you have a wonderful day, and uh, thanks for calling. All right, we're going to go for the break right now. You're listening to At Your Service here on Nationwide 90 FM. Our Welcome back. We have Miss White on the line. Good morning. How are you doing? Hello, good morning. Good to have you. Where are you calling from? Um, Kingston. Yeah, okay, you go right ahead. How are you doing? Not How bad. Doing? Good to have you. Good morning. Yes, I, I have a concern here. I was traveling to the U.S. recently. And I was turned back at Atlanta because uh, the, my, cause, uh, my family, mem I was traveling there to visit my family member and she bought a ticket on special and the ticket was for three months, but I wasn't going there for three months. I was just going there for a few weeks and they sent me back saying that um, they don't believe I'm traveling there. I'm going to visit. Uh, they, they believe I'm going there to work. So they sent me back. They, the CPB officer sent me back and said um, I should re I should reapply for for a visa. She's given me a chance to reapply for go and reapply back at the embassy for a visa. So I want to know if 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 I have any chance for reapplying, what my chances are. Okay, hi. Um, good morning. Uh, this is Terry. Good morning. Um, morning. Thanks for calling in. Um, so, if I understand your situation correctly, you were uh, trying to get entrance into the United States, and you were turned around at the border. Is that right? Yes. This is the second. I went there before, and I was going back there. Okay. So, right. The the CBP officer is correct. You can reapply for a visa at any time that you want. Um, I can't really speak specifically to your case because I don't know the details and I, don't, I wasn't there. I don't you know what happened. Know what happened. But um, you are free to reapply, and when you do reapply, the officer um, may be able to give you more information about why you were turned around or why um, you, you were ref denied entry into the United States. And then um, when you come in for the interview, um, I would suggest whatever you brought to the last interview, be it, you know, um, you know, job letter or bank documents, things like that, you bring all of that back in, like you're re basically reapplying from the beginning, and just um, okay. tell the officer, you know, what your plans were in the United States, what happened, exactly why you were going there, how long you were planning to stay, and give them all that information. And okay. every time somebody comes in for a visa application, they meet with um, a, an officer that's going to going to give them a, a fair and just um, adjudication and use all the information that they have to try to make the best decision that they can. So they're going to give you, you know, as fair a hearing as anybody else and when you come in uh, for the interview, okay? Okay, and um, one other thing, as, as, she, as she told me, I could reapply and I just want to know before, I re if how, how could I know that for sure that I could reapply because if, um, before I made the application? You in, you can reapply, um, you know, any any time that you want. There's no there's no um, bar on reapplying for the visa. Um, the question is, when you come in, you know, are you going to be issued or not? But anybody can re can apply for a visa or reapply for a visa. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for calling. All right, you have a wonderful day, and thanks very much for calling. <coughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> in this business of going to the United States, or any country for that matter, you know, there are some persons who um, probably didn't get a visa, but they're hell-bent on finding some way to reach the United States, or probably another country, but you can speak specifically about the United States. They probably travel to a nearby country in order to go to the States, 
is this a wise well I know it's not a wise decision but <laughs> I'd love you to speak to those persons who think that's a way to get to the United States if they don't get a visa you want to you speak to that uh, Gary yes I'd, <clears throat> I'd be happy to Vernon um, you know that uh, there are people that uh, feel I guess desperate enough that they'll try whatever means mm -hmm. they can to to immigrate to another country uh, the problem there of course is uh, uh, besides being illegal it's extremely dangerous uh, there are there are bad people out there that are more than happy to uh, to help smuggle you into another country um, we read reports in the paper all the time of people in very dire conditions um, being kept inside of you know vehicles or uh, containers or whatever the case some might have be. Some have lost their lives. Yes they do. Yeah. They do and that's that's the sad thing and it's it's extremely dangerous and um, often very expensive um, so obviously we would discourage people from from using those means um, there are um, many legal ways uh, to immigrate to another country you can go there as a worker you can go there as uh, you know obviously as a guest to to tour the country um, mm -hmm. and um, we would just encourage people to uh, as we said during our during our campaign to apply the right way uh, to use the system uh, to um, to immigrate or to simply visit the the United States legally and, right. and safely well we have a caller let's go to this next caller good morning Ms. Fletcher how you do I am okay. Good to have you, man. Good morning. Thank Good you. morning. First, first on your program. I, I have first at time? Oh, yeah, yeah, first on your program. No, I know I was missing so something. Busy. I know I was I missing something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I had a problem. I had a valid visa. I went to the United States a couple of times. And then I went last year. I went to, um, I was connecting site at, um, at um, Atlanta, Georgia. And what they did, they had about a four-month ticket. And then they asked how long I was going to stay. But I wasn't going to stay four months, but I bought the ticket and they said four months. So they called the, they called the, um, the officer, gave him my passport. And then you know what they did? They did to me. It was so unjust. It was as if I was bringing in drugs or something. They treat me so badly and cuffed on my hands. They locked me up, put chain on my waist. You would never believe. I could not believe that they did that to me. I could not believe it. And then they put me into a, um, like a jail and then send me back like um, I went there the Tuesday. But uh, tell you what, I, I, I'm not too sure the officers will be able to answer your uh, questions about your specific case. Right. But I'd lo you, they, are, they want to ask you some questions to get further clarification because you said yeah. you did nothing, right? No, Which is no, they, said, they, said, they just said that I was going to work. Oh, all right. Um, so, Terry, you want to take... Yeah, work. sure. I mean, similar to our pre to the previous caller, um, we can't really talk about your situation because we don't know about your situation specifically. Um, you can. You have a couple of options right now. You can always reapply for the visa if your visa was no, canceled. Said, let, let, let me tell you what they said. They canceled my visa for um, um, five years' time before I can reapply. Okay. Well, um... Well, I would say that um yeah, so your your options are still pretty much the same. You can you can um you can reapply if they said that you had to wait 5 years until you until you reapply. That might change the situation a little bit. But you can always um go towards uh send us an email and maybe try to get some some information. Um it, our email is going to be Kingston NIV at state S T A T E dot g o v and um, and uh, you, you know you know that is not the real plan is my problem is the way they treat it right and it wasn't like hello hello i'm just suggesting yeah. to you so that you can send an email so do you have a pen and paper there yeah okay make a note so she's gonna give you that email I'll, address i'll tell you the email address again it's kingston niv at yeah. state s t a t e dot g o v yes yeah. And I, I, we want to, we do want to say, I, like I said, we weren't, uh, we weren't there at the time. We don't know exactly what happened, but we want everybody to have, um, you know, a, a comfortable and enjoyable trip to the United States. If there, if you, if you felt that you were mistreated, we do apologize for that. We don't want people to um, come there and be mistreated. Um, that's not what we want. We want to facilitate good travel to the United States. I understand. Yeah, and it sounds like you did, you did have a tough time. And and yeah, right. 
So uh, hopefully we can try to find some resolution for you. Um, and thank you for calling in. Thanks for, for letting us know. Okay, thank All you. All right, so you're going to send that email? Yeah. Right. You you have the you have, you have have you made note of the email address? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. You send that email address. All right. T send that email message. And all of our email addresses, all of our contact information is going to be on our website as well. Okay. Yeah. It's going. I'm going to say it. And if you have questions that you don't get to ask today, you can always visit our website. It's Kingston. Dot yes. U. Dot U S Embassy. U S Embassy. Yes, ma'am. Dot G O V. So okay. Kingston dot US Embassy dot G O V. Okay? Yes, thank, right, you. thank you very much for calling. Um uh, Gary and uh Terry, let's go to another caller. We have no Michael, good morning Michael, how are you doing? Where are you calling from? Yes. Good morning, sir. Portmore. Hey, good to be hearing from Portmore. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. Good morning. First time on your program. Boy, uh -huh. getting up quite a few first callers, boy. Yeah. Welcome. Good to have you, man. Yeah, I'm just Trying to make a, a, a career. Um, our father was in uh, USA and he did the filing for me. And my prior date is. Hold on, I, you, I don't think we heard you quite. Would you want to start again? Okay, yeah. Um, my father is in the US and he had did some filing for me. So I'm, 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 I'm married. And the, the filing was done on the 2008, February 2008. I just need to find out which party they are um, processing at this time now. Right. Um, so, right, um, Michael. Thanks for calling. Calling in. Yes, yes. So, um, the the whole situation with filing dates and and priority dates and it's it's all pretty pretty uh, interesting, pretty layered. Um, and so what I would suggest to you, if you have um, got a specific question about your filing date, is that you can send us an email, okay? You can tell us when the filing started, what visa class are you, and we can try to get um, an answer back to you through the email. That might be a more accurate way for us to kind of determine um, when, your, when, your filing, or when your priority date is going to be coming up. So do you have a pen and paper handy, Michael, there? Yes, yes. Okay, so I want you to write this down for me. It's going to be Kingston IV. Yeah, Kingston, like Kingston, Jamaica. IV. IV at state.gov. Okay. Because we have some information here, but I want to make sure that you get the most accurate answer so we can try to help you. So just tell them that Gary and Terry, you talked to Gary and Terry today on the show, and um, we'll try to get an answer for you. Okay? Okay, thanks so much. Thanks, Michael. All right, have a wonderful day. Okay, we have, I think, a lady at this point. Uh, Paulette, how are you doing? Good to Good have morning, you. Good morning, Mr. Darby. Hey, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Kingston. Hey, you go right ahead. Okay, I have a question. Um, I got a 10-year visa in 98. So, you know, it expired in 2008. At two times, um, I spent like four months. Spent like two weeks, one month, and four months. But since that, I applied twice for the visa and got turned down. So I need to know if there's a possibility we will be able to get back another visa. All right. Well, thank you for calling. Um, so, uh, so you had a visa from from '98 to 2008, and during that yeah. period of time, you mm -hmm. uh, a couple of times you spent four months in the United well, twice, States. Twice. Okay. What? All right. Um, yeah, I mean, certainly there's always a possibility, and I would I would be prepared when you do um, uh, apply for a new visa to just talk to the officer about uh, why you spent so much time in the United States. There's nothing obviously illegal about spending that a period of time as long as the officer at the border gave you uh, an, you know that much time. But sometimes it does raise questions about. Um, you know what you were doing and how you were supporting yourself. Yes, um, I know that, but I wasn't working or anything. I well, wasn't working. I tried to explain that when I went there, but you sure. know, sometimes they don't give you any time to explain. Well, yeah, and 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 that may be true, but but I would still, uh, you know, try to explain. Uh, what you were doing up there and how you were supporting yourself because I know from my personal experience I know I couldn't take four months off <laughs> and uh, and 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 go to another country without uh, employment so just explain that to them and um, and I would certainly uh, tell you that if you would like to reapply you're welcome to do so I, I try up to last year but I'm hoping to try this year again but I try up to last year and got turned on as well okay 
All right. Well, I would just be prepared with, you know, with that information and, and with your situation and, and present that to the officer when you uh, reapply. Okay. I have another question. How long does it take um, when you apply for a fiancé visa? Oh, that's, uh, you know, they they go relatively quick, but a lot depends on how quickly the person completes all of the steps that they need to, to complete, uh, mm -hmm. because obviously there's, uh, you know, documentation and so forth um, mm -hmm. that they need to submit. Uh, so the, it's very difficult um, to give you a, an exact time frame on fiancé visas, mm -hmm. but we do give them high priority and, and process them as quickly as we can. Right, thank you. Very much. Have a good day. Thank you very much, and thank God again. All right, let's go now to Shauna Kay. Good morning, Shauna Kay. How are you? Good morning. Um, good morning. I'm calling from Portmore. Hey, boy. Good to have you. Thanks. My father fell for me as a minor. I am 18 year years old now, but for whatever reason, the filing has slowed up, and I was just wondering why. So, um... Good morning, Shauna, Shauna Kay. Um, this is Terry. Um, so mm -hmm. you say your father filed for you, and you and you just recently felt like this the filing was slowing down. Is that what happened? Yes. Ha have you been Have you been to the embassy at all yet for an interview, or no? No. So um, in the very early stages of the filing, not not even the very early stages, but while the things are st all of the paperwork and documentation is still up in the United States, it can take a long time for the process to move ahead. And sometimes um, when we're you know here or you know in Jamaica, it seems like things are taking a long time. But you got to understand that the volume of of immigrant visa petitions that are coming in. To the Oh, I think we've lost John again. Yeah, I think we lost that caller. Um, if you're listening to us, we're going to ask you to try calling or something. Probably her credit uh, ran out. All right, mm -hmm. let's now go to another caller. Pauline, good morning. How are you? Good to have Hello, you. Good morning. I'm fine. Good morning. Calling Pauline. from? Good morning. Calling from St. Anne. Hey, the beautiful parish of St. Anne. Good. I love the you. country yep. people. Good to have yep. you, man. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm calling... I need some explanation here. Um, I, 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 got, I went to the embassy last year. My boss wrote a letter saying that he would take me with him to the U.S. That was in last year, but I got a single entry. But at the bottom of my, my visa, the annotation, it is saying that personal or domestic employee of the, the person I'm working with. Okay. Yes, so now they are telling me that they won't be traveling this year because they wanted to travel from last year. So I'm wondering if I could travel with this visa by myself or I will have to travel with them. <clears throat> well, it sounds like, Pauline, that the visa was actually issued for you to travel with your employer as a domestic employee. So uh, that is the purpose of the visa for you to travel uh, okay. with your employer in that, in that status. So could I reapply for one then for myself? Sure, sure. You're welcome yeah. to uh, to reapply at any time uh, for a visa for yourself to, to travel as a tourist. Okay. Anytime soon? Sure, anytime. Okay. Good luck. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, All bye. right, thank you very much for calling. Um, uh, I think we have back Miss White. Miss White, how are you doing? It's good to have you back, man. You want to continue? Yes, um, I, I have another question. The, the, the CPB officer, she told me that um, she, as I was listening, and I what heard What officer the, you said? The CPB officer. CPB. At the, Atlanta Air, the Customs Atlanta, and Border Patrol. You're okay. Yeah. Um, she told me, um, she, as I heard, the, the, the other caller said that she gave her a five-year, a five-year, five-year before entering the we enter in the U.S., mm -hmm. but that that officer told me that um, she's given me the chance to go back and reapply. She won't give me that on on my visa. So that's what I was wondering if if that's if what she told me was correct or something. So right. Um, so everybody is different, um, uh, Mrs. White. Everybody has different situations. So maybe the CBP officer told this other applicant or this other person one thing as they were trying to get entry into the United States, and maybe told you another thing. If the officer didn't say anything about you having any kind of ban on reentry, then um, yeah. then then 
you prob I can't say for sure, but then it doesn't seem to be that you do have a ban. So what I would suggest, like we said before, reapply. The officer, when you do your interview, will be able to tell you more about you know what the reason was that you were denied entry and any um, situations that may have arisen because of that. And you'll at least have the peace of mind of knowing um, exactly you know why you were denied entry into the United States when you come back in. And and they, they treat people very they treat people very bad bad they like like you're a criminal or something. They catch you with some contraband or you was entering the, the place illegal or yeah, something. Yeah, remember they take the phone and they well, remember, you remember, I did ask her to send her em um, send an email. Right, right. We yes. Yeah, we gave you the email address and and yeah. and. Uh, can I can I have it because I didn't get all of it. Okay, I can say it again. Um, and for anybody listening, if you have questions regarding NIVs, or you can visit our website, or you can uh, send us an email. Uh, the email address is Kingston. Yeah. N I V. Yes. At state s t a t e. Yeah. Dot g o v. And the website, okay. which is going to be I'll answer a lot of the questions that you're probably that a lot of people may have, is going to be Kingston. Dot U.S. Embassy. Dot G O V. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for calling, and we have again, um, Shauna K. Yes. Hello. Good morning. Yes. Good to have you back. Uh huh. Yes. Sorry about. It. No, yes, I'm, I we're glad you could get reconnected, Sean and Kay. So what I was just going to finish saying is that, you know, it seems like the process takes a really long time. And in a lot of cases, it can take years and years before you hear a result. Um, you're ready to get your life started in the United States, and it can be frustrating, and we understand that. But the volume of, of immigrant visa petitions that comes comes through the United States is, you know, staggering. Like, you can't even really imagine how many people, you know, want to move there. And so there is a lot of paperwork to go through. There are a lot of forms to fill out and so our people are working uh, you know diligently to try to move through the backlog and we're, we're working on this end as well so what we can ask is for your patience and um, if you have you know if you have documents that your petitioner needs to send in or that you need to send in on your side try to get them go get those in as soon as possible so that we can um, you know finish the filing and and we can get you into the United States. And as Gary was saying earlier, even if you have an immigrant visa p petition going on um, at any time, you can feel free to apply for a non-immigrant visa um, so that you can a, a visitor's visa and you can travel to the United States. And we want to facilitate that good travel to people to come and, you know, we to in the meantime, while they're waiting on their immigrant petitions to be able to see their families. Oh, okay. I have a non-immigrant visa, so I can travel... Um, even if the filing is in process. Oh, certainly. Yeah, if you've got a non-immigrant visa, then you're you're more than welcome to travel to the United States. Okay. Um, you have a personal number that I can contact to speak and someone speak to somebody one on one. We we don't, but we we do have the email address that um, I gave out earlier, and that is staffed by a person who will. We, there's an automated response that comes back immediately, but we have people who go through that mailbox and are are resp replying to those emails and getting back to people with questions about their cases. Did you get the email address, or should I tell you again? Yeah, you can tell me. Okay, so um, it's Kingston, like Jama like Kingston, Jamaica, I V at state s t a t e mm -hmm. dot g o v and there's somebody at that at that email address that can can help you and answer your questions okay thank you very much thank thanks you. for calling <coughs> all right thank you very much for calling we now have rose rose good morning hello good morning yes good morning. i'm sure you good have morning, beautiful rose. rose yes i just want to um ask about the the u.s embassy visa because i went there two times and i didn't get you I want to know what is in trouble. <clears throat> okay. Uh, well, Rose, thank you for calling. And uh, specifically, your question is, um, uh, you said you applied for a visa previously, but were not able to get it? Yes, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right, go continue. Okay, um, um, I was just going to say um, that um, obviously everybody's uh, situation is slightly different. Uh, so you know we can't specifically talk to your uh, your case, um, but you know the the important thing when you come in to apply for a visa is to tell the officer about your situation perhaps uh, if something has changed in your life since the last time you applied to that you can uh, talk about that uh, what because the last time when I applied when they are asking me some questions I'm asking about the children okay 
and I want to know if it's the children stopping because I don't want I, I don't want to go away and leave them. I just want to go and visit, spend some time, and come back. Sure, sure. You know, everybody would want to know about the United States. Would want to travel and come back to their kids and things. Certainly. Certainly, Rose, I understand that. And um, yeah, no, there's there's no way for me to know exactly uh, what the what the questions were. Uh, but the officers are just uh, when they're interviewing you and talking to you, they're just trying to get a, an idea of your situation and to, to better understand that so that they can try and make the best decision uh, possible. And so I would just encourage you to. I'm sorry. Master, yeah, but Carlo, Carlo, as yes, I said yes. to you before, they, they will not be able to discuss your specific case. They don't have a file in front of them. They can't verify okay. what you say. So they can give you general information, but they can't go into your specific case. Because, you know, we couldn't wouldn't discuss that on air. But um, Terry, you're going to say something? Yeah, else? I just want to say that, um, you know, it can be really frustrating for a lot of people who, like a lot of the callers who've called in today, who have come in again and again for an interview. Um, and I just want to say that we issue to people, all types of people, we issue to students, we issue to higglers, we issue to, um, you know, teachers and, and, and everybody across the spectrum of Jamaican society. And when you come in, uh, the officer is going to give you, get all, you know, try to get as much information as they can and, and give you um, a fair hearing and give you all the, inf um, sorry, and give you as much, you know, um, time as you as you as they can give you to try to get as much information as they can and make uh, a, a fair decision so okay. and it's, and I understand it can be frustrating but the officer is just following US immigration law and they're you know if if you come in and and put everything out there the officer is going to give you a fair adjudication all okay. right thank you very much That's for calling okay. now um, many persons I think we started before Many persons, because uh, they are anxious to get that visa to go to the United States, we are the persons who are calling. But then again, you have to make a decision. Not everybody will be able to uh, get a visa to go to the States. And I guess you have to use your discretion. Right. Mm -hmm. But there are some persons, because they are anxious, they will be, should I, can I say, be very creative? Mm, yes. <laughs> to put it nicely. Yes. Yeah. Very, yeah. Um, in terms of getting to the United States, let's mm -hmm. speak about some of the challenges that you have been facing by those who they, they are so creative that um, it's no longer it's no longer a matter of creativity; it's a matter of breaking the law. Yes. Well, thanks, uh, Darby, for for mentioning that because you know, as uh, the fraud prevention manager at the embassy, that's those are the people I tend to get the opportunity to talk to oh. um, and discuss their uh, creative methods for trying to get to the yeah, United States. Yeah, I've stories to tell. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, you know, what we, we see is we see people that feel like um, they need some sort of help uh, to uh, to make themselves look more qualified for mm -hmm. a visa. Um, the reality is, is, as Terry was saying uh, earlier, the, the consular officer who adjudicates that case uh, will look at the information that the, um, the person has provided, will uh, interview them and discuss their situation and, and give them the fairest hearing they possibly can. Uh, what we see is that sometimes people will um, try to convince them that if they pay them a certain amount of money uh, that they can give them a better chance of, of getting to the United States. What do you call that man again? Um, the, the, the visa fixer man. The fixer man. The fixer man. The fixer man. <laughs> I love that. Exactly. Yeah. And, and we're continuing to see that, see people pay um, individuals. And sometimes, frankly, uh, I was talking to a, a lady just the other day who uh, uh, had somebody assist her um, and there was really um, sh I guess she was afraid to go online and do it and there's no problem with getting help from somebody but I would say make sure it's somebody you trust and, and somebody that's going to put mm -hmm. correct information because this individual actually put information in the application that wasn't true when she uh, she indicated that she didn't know that that information had been yeah, put in because there. it can get a fix a man and you end up getting a fix, which probably fix you for a very yes long time sir. to come, you see. Yeah, <laughs> you you gotta go the for fix. the break. You're listening to At Your Service here on Nationwide 90 FM. Welcome back. We talk about the fixer man. You see, we now know that you can end up getting fixed for probably permanently or for a long time to come. So that's not the route to go. Nope. But, and I've always talked about walking with a document of 
truth. Um, right. <laughs> I'm sure there are other right. things that you have seen, both of you. You want to tell us about that? Because I will tell you, I've, persons have come to me and they have complained to me. And I know that sometimes they don't mean to do something mm. wrong, but they're so anxious. Right. And then somebody cross the fence and say, well, I mean, you know, someone who can do a thing for you. And they're so anxious to go that they go to somebody else. And, of course, they really mess up themselves mm-hmm. for life. So, tell us more about the things that uh, persons do. And, of course, you know, persons are listening to this program from all over the world. So, um, you can speak to the world <laughs> at this point. Well, I, I can say that I've seen a, a specific case where an, an applicant came in with um, a job letter that um, the officer at the window had some concerns about. Yes. So we called her place of we called this applicant's place of business and we said, um, you know, um, did you write this job letter? And they no. said, no, we didn't write this job letter, but this person works here. This is her salary. This is w- w- her responsibility. But we didn't write this job letter. And so we dig into it and we find out that her bosses didn't write the job letter and she got it from such and such a person but because she was so nervous about the about the uh, interview she brought yes. in this letter this fake letter about her real job and she ended up get, having a lot of trouble because of that and so people feel so anxious they have to bring they something they losing the job too it, I, I don't know oh. what the final result was but yes, I'm sure yes. her job was not happy about that and it didn't reflect well on her and I just think people get so anxious and so nervous about it that they get caught up in things. They go here, they go there, they pay somebody, you know, a hundred thousand uh, dollars for a document that we that the officers who have a lot of experience with with false document can look at and see mm-hmm. this doesn't look real and you're throwing your money away when a lot of the times these people who go to these fixers they would have been approved for the visa because we can look at their you know their their income we can look at their ties and we can see Mm -hmm. this person qualifies but because they get anxious because they feel like they need to bring all this and all that they get caught up and now instead of getting the visa they're permanently ineligible from coming to the united states and it's there's no reason for it it's just it's really a shame i and i personally think and can you imagine if somebody who i heard about was getting what three million dollars um, per year, mm-hmm. and you've never traveled, and you're so anxious about traveling. Right. You know, <laughs> yeah. I hear some stories, boys. Something yeah. I we only have a, another minute. I'm sure you can tell us another interesting story, Gary or Terry. Um, well, you know, as Terry is saying, we we do see um, a lot of people uh, that are very anxious about coming, but on the other side, we see people. Um, that um, that deliberately, um, you know, cre- uh-huh. yeah, they deliberately create a, a whole different life. Um, uh, they uh, create a job that doesn't exist, a life that doesn't exist, and uh, you know, we we have resources to be able so to. So they want you to create a visa that doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, amazing. Well, now we know. Speak the truth. Speak it ever. Cause it. As our, as our colleague Felix said once on this show, you only need to bring one document with you to the visa interview, and that is the truth. And Felix, if you're listening, that inspires me I have me every copyright day. to that. Too. Oh, have you? Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, boy, some of my crazy thoughts, you see. <laughs> I want to thank you very much, uh, Fraud Prevention Manager Gary Dewey and uh, Fraud Prevention Officer Terry Day for being with us, uh, both consular officers at the United States Embassy right here in Kingston. We'll have uh, officers again week after next. And of course, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, whatever they say applies to the world. So you tune into the station, whether on the internet or on your phone, you stay with us and you can learn quite a bit. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thanks Bernie, for Gary, us. and uh, Terry. <coughs> All right, we have some wonderful persons who are celebrating their birthday today. Uh, by the way, Gary, anybody? I, my birthday was Sunday. Uh, you did not tell <laughs> I me. Did, I did. That's another invitation that got lost in the mail, Vernon. What's going on with the mail over here? <laughs> No, my birthday was Sunday, and we have two people in our office, Jennifer and George, who celebrated their birthday last week. So oh. we, it just passed, but we're still we're still partying. I need to have that at, at my database, you know. <laughs> I'm sure I have yours doing. I'm sure I have yours. Okay. I'll check it after this. 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 Okay.